This is Dumbo Brooklyn in the opening scene of Bridge of Spies. And this is what that same block actually looks like today. To make this scene convincingly look like 1957, every detail in this street had to be changed, right down to the font on the signs. This was all Rena D'Angelo's job, an Oscar-nominated set decorator who's worked on period pieces like The French Dispatch, West Side Story, The Post, and Mad Men. Here's a newsstand. That's in every movie. Every single decorator in New York has probably used it about 10 times. <laughs> Rena took us through eclectic encore props in NYC to show us how she'd turn a modern New York City street into a 1950s time capsule. When a location is scouted, the first order of business is hiding things that don't belong in the era. That starts with taking down security cameras and swapping all the cars in the streets for vintage ones with period license plates. One of the most important details to swap is any and all signage. And knowing what signs to put up means knowing your history. They used to paint advertisements on benches in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. These are great. I would put these in a smoke shop window. This big tire sign used in Bridge of Spies helped make Dumbo look properly industrial for the 50s, as opposed to its current look of high-rise apartment buildings. A lot of neighborhoods were also historically defined by their communities, so you'd need cultural signifiers like these signs in Hebrew or specific food advertisements. I think I used Murphy and Ashcon salted fish in Bridge of Spies. When they're hand-painted, that makes them look older because they haven't been printed, they're not mass-produced. Small details can make all the difference. This raised text means it's probably from the 50s or 60s. While the flat text on these means they were produced a bit later, since most cities stopped embossing road signs in the 70s and 80s. The font is also a giveaway. That spitting sign looks older than this hair parlor sign because that typeface has been around since the 19th century, whereas this category of sans serifs was more popular in the 80s. Besides font and embossing, the main thing that set decorators look at when deciding what fits into their era is materials. This means knowing what signs were made from in previous decades. Metal. Wood. Probably from the 20s or 30s, because it's cast iron. As opposed to the plastics used in more recent decades, which made signs lighter. Signs, however, can only do so much. Some contemporary giveaways are literally bolted into the ground. So Rena will cover those using hollow crates and barrels. Old telephone booths can visually block other modern features. This one would fit right in on a Manhattan street corner from the mid-50s to the late 70s. Rena can tell these payphones are from the 50s based on the width and style of the dial. The plastic dial and push button came later, in the 70s and 80s. Strategically placed kiosks can also hide larger giveaways, like modern traffic lights or street lamps. She made six of these more contemporary-looking newsstands for the 70s setting of the post. For a 50s movie, she'd take this sort of newsstand and fill it with magazines, newspapers, signs, and products all specific to the decade. Luckily, Eclectic has a ton of those. And it's all real packaging, all this stuff. Besides getting period products from prop houses like this one, set decorators will scour the basements of local grocery stores, where shopkeepers often keep surplus products from decades ago. Stuff that's good for a hardware store, a beauty parlor, According to Rena, the key to making storefronts look real is the quantity of the products. She'll sometimes scan this packaging, print copies of it, and use it to wrap rows and rows of empty boxes. Set decorators also do a lot of research into the consumer culture of the era, especially for a 50s piece, since consumer goods had a lot of influence on the decade's imagery. They need to know what people were buying and selling and what kinds of services were offered on every block. There was always a shoe repair shop because people didn't just go buy new shoes when their shoes wore out. They would go and get them fixed. So it, on every single street, there's always a shoe repair guy. New tech like televisions were also often displayed in windows. This is perfect for an electronics store. For the 50s, you'd want this kind of TV with the rabbit ears or any of these other boxy looking ones. This is definitely 50s. This is definitely 50s. This is early 50s. She used radios like this for the 50s setting of French Dispatch. Even clothing stores had specific models for specific eras. I would put those in a, like a ladies' clothing store. For the 50 mannequins that filled the front of Gimbel's department store in West Side Story, Rena found vintage mannequin heads. 
which for females were rounder and had less makeup compared to later decades. See the difference in the faces? They just have a different structure and the hair is molded. I would use this in a movie from the 50s. Male mannequins in the 50s looked much skinnier and less muscular than they do today, so she modeled the men's bodies off teenage boy mannequins. Another element custom made for West Side Story was less glamorous. So this is a more contemporary city street garbage can, which we need to get rid of. These older wire cans are what would be on the street in the 50s and the 60s. This one isn't that old, but we've made it look old by spraying it down with paint. On West Side Story, I had about 400 of these because everywhere we went, they wanted garbage everywhere. But some details are harder to replace, like lamp posts. Productions could simply replace lamp posts digitally in post, but if you want that look on set, you have to have these wraps. You see these back here? Those are fake wraps so that you can wrap a contemporary light post to turn it into one of these without bringing one of these 70 million pound ones out. Designers might also swap out the light bulbs, like in Joker. Gotham in 1981 would have had sodium vapor street lamps, which gave off a sort of icky orange glow. So the team swapped out all the modern LED bulbs for the old sodium vapor kind just to get the right lighting. It's those kinds of fine distinction that can make or break a period scene. And with all these details, it can take days or even weeks of street dressing to film just a few minutes of screen time. That's what it takes to create a time warp in the middle of a bustling modern city. We'll make 200 newspapers and we'll give props 10 so that they have them for people to be reading, or if there's 100 people reading, the props will make 100. And on the post, it was just piles and piles of newspapers.